Welcome back. In this presentation, I will relate the statistical concept of bias and variance to the machine learning concept of underfitting and overfitting. And we will see that basically they are synonymous. So to introduce those concepts, uh, I would like first to emphasize that uh, when we work in machine learning on, uh, on training data, we have access to a limited number of observations to build our training set. And this comes from the fact that it's usually very expensive to collect uh, the, the, the data points and furthermore to label the, the value of the target variable for each of those data points. And we can consider that the, the specific training uh, set that we have at our disposition to, to train a model is a small random subset of all the possible observations for the given phenomenon that we are trying to model. And for instance, if you take the example of the model that predicts the income, the income level based on demographic data, we have access to a survey of a couple of thousands of people for which we collect the data. And we hope that when, by training a model on this survey data, we can generalize to the general population of uh, the United States where we have hundreds of millions of people. So we have a small training set. We try to make predictions for all the possible observations. But those tens of thousands of data points, they are taken at random in the general po population in the US. And so what if we had access to a different subset, not the one that we observed, but another one? Uh, we are taking the same uh, survey procedure to, to pick them at random. What is the impact of this choice of the training set on the learned prediction function? How much will it change? Uh, if we consider a, mo a model that overfits, so this is the same example as previously, where we try to predict y the, on the x uh, y axis from the x axis, uh, and there is a ground truth model that we do not have access to, f star, plus some noise that generate this data, and we have access just to 30 data points observations for our training set. If we fit our degree nine polynomial on this you see that we have this overfitting model with those extreme predictions on the edges. We can represent this model as blue arrow on a target. Ideally, the best model would be in the center. So the F star model here would be in the center and have a zero prediction error. And this model is making some prediction error on the edges in different manner, uh, left and right. And if we have access to a different training set for the same problem, we would get a different model, like making very different predictions here on the edges, and so different, a very different location on um, the target. But the error to the center, the, the distance to the center, or the prediction error, would be approximately the same as the previous one. There, this one is not necessarily better than this one. They are just different. And if we change, if we resample this data set uh, many times, we get many different functions. And here you see it's really overfitting because it's it's going through those three data points here to, to make this weird shape, which is kind of capturing the noise of those three specific data points. And it's not really related to the general shape of the of the generative process. So if we repeat this many times, we get plenty of models that are very different from one another. But you see that the kind of errors that they do is not necessarily the same. Like for instance, here you have uh, under prediction errors and over prediction errors and uh, the same in the middle actually, but this is more extreme. And so on average, you see that they, they do not make a systematic kind of error. So the average model would be probably good, but the individual models that we get by training on different training set uh, are very different from one another and they are all bad basically and they are all overfitting. So this problem is what we call the variance of the estimated model uh, which is basically a, a large dependency on small variation of the training set. Uh, we have the opposite problem which is the problem of bias. So here we fit uh, uh, other family of model on the same data. This time just linear model, straight lines, or degree one polynomial. 
And here you see that this model is making some uh, prediction errors. For instance, here it's under predicting those data points. Here it's under predicting those data points. Uh, and here it's it tends to over predict those data points. If we so there, there is also a representation on the target as previously. And because we are making some prediction errors, uh, the test error is uh, not located at the, the model is not located at the center of the target because we have some test error. If we change the, the sample of the training set again, you see that the function this time does not move much. So the prediction function is not impacted much. You see on the target, it doesn't move much. And here, the slope is almost the same. Uh, and we can do another one here. If we repeat this many times, you see that all the model makes some errors. But what is interesting here is that the errors are groups. Uh, they, they, they make the same kind of uh, errors. In particular here, you see that they all under predict those values. In this region in the center, they, they over predict uh, all of them. They, none of them is able to predict a, a small value here. And here again, we have uh, under predictions. Okay, so on the target, those models suffer from a bias that move them away from the center on average. Okay, so if I summarize underfit versus overfit or bias versus variance, uh, the bias is that all the models make a systematic uh, prediction error. And so on average, they, do, they are not good. Why the variance is the fact that maybe on average they are good. Uh, they are centered around the optimal model, but they have a high sensitivity to the specific training set that, they, that we have used to, to estimate those models. And therefore, they also have bad test errors, uh, individual test errors. Okay. So it's again the same fundamental trade off of machine learning. So this can be formalized uh, from a mathematical point of view with exact quantity. Uh, and we can actually decompose what we call the mean squared error of a regression model uh, by taking the sum of a squared bias plus the variance plus irreducible errors. But uh, I would don't want to go into detail for, for this MOOC. If you have a background in mathematics or interesting, interested in learning more, you can have a look at the Wikipedia article on the decomposition of the mean squared error. So the main take home message from this presentation is that a high bias model is underfitting. It makes systematic prediction errors. The model prefers to ignore some aspects of the data. Uh, and sometimes we call them uh, misspecified models. Okay, they, they cannot really uh, adjust to the, 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 the true models because we made a choice that is moving them away on average from the true model. Uh, on the opposite side, we have the high variance model, which are an overfitting. Their prediction errors um, <clears throat> do not have a systematic obvious structure. They can be all around the place. Uh, and a small change in the training set causes a large change in the train model, uh, in the prediction function that we obtain at the end of the training process. Uh, so you can consider them as unstable models because they have too much flexibility and they capture the noise of the data. Um, keep in mind that the bias can come from the choice of the model family and not just the choice of a specific parameter uh, of a, a model class. Thank you very much for your attention.